Okay everybody, welcome back to uh, a new tutorial. This time we're gonna talk about what comes next after you find the shear force and bending moment diagram. That's an example we have in our hand right here. We have this beam with this kind of loading and on the left we see the cross section uh, with the dimensions and what we need to do is to find or to, de to determine the maximum compressive flexural stress and the tensile or the maximum tensile flexural stress. Basically, let's jump into the solution here. So, solution, we will say the following that the maximum stress or the stress in general in a cross section equals the moment at this the point of interest times y which is the distance from the neutral axis to the compression uh, face or the tensile face so either the top of the top fiber of the beam or the bottom fiber of the beam divided by the moment of inertia so these are the three quantities we need to find if I'm looking for sigma max, that means I'm going to use m max. So the best thing to do here is to find the maximum bending moment, and that can be found using the moment diagram. The second thing, the y, is the distance as discussed earlier, and it's from the neutral axis to the fiber of interest. So we need to find the location of the neutral axis and this is uh, we've discussed this in a couple of tutorials how to find the centroid location then the moment of inertia we can find it after we find the centroid so let's go ahead okay with this beam let's uh, start a new page so for the beam I will do the summation of the forces and the y direction should equal to zero. Looking back at the beam, I have a reaction here that goes like this, and a reaction here that goes like this. This one is by, and this one is dy. So what I'm trying to do is saying that summation of the force and the y equals to zero. That will give me that by plus dy equals 1,000 plus whatever is the concentration of this load which is 100 multiplied by 4 that's 400 so basically it's by plus dy equals 1400 so that's my equation so by plus dy equals 1400 pounds now I'm gonna do the summation of the moments about a point and I will assume this is my positive direction should equal to zero looking back I can take the summation of the moments about point B and that will give me first dy multiplied by 8 so it's 8 dy and it's rotating this way so it's positive then the second one would be with the 1000 multiplied by the 4 and that will be 4000 because it's 1000 multiplied by the 4 and it's going this way so it's negative and then I need one more force which is the concentration of this which has a value of 400 and it's acting at a distance 2 and it's going this way so 100 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 4 is 400 400 multiplied by 2 is 800 so it's 800 and it's going this way so it's positive now if I want to solve for dy I will have 4000 minus 800 the whole thing is over 8 that will give me dy equals if I do this very quickly it's going to give me 
400 pounds and now if I substitute back into this equation so this is dy then I'll have by plus 400 equals 1400 and you guessed it I will have by equals 1000 pounds okay that's the first step is to find the reactions now let me draw back the beam again okay so we will have uh, probably a hinge here a roller here and a point load here and the distributed load here and I'm gonna raise those and introduce the forces I have so this one looks something like this 100 pound per foot and this one is a thousand pounds and the distances as usual we've seen them before it's four four and four and for the values I have a by which is 1000 so let's say 1000 here pounds of course and here I have dy which was I believe 400 was it yes it was 400 so it's 400 pounds now I'm ready to draw the shear and bending moment diagrams so how can we do this L we draw a line and let's see the important points I need to find the shear force this is by the way this is the shear diagram this is the V so I need to know the shear here uh, the shear at the support of course the shear under the distributed uh, under the point load and of course at the end of the beam so the shear here is zero this cantilever this segment is cantilevered out okay so what about the shear here to find the shear here at this point basically what you say you say I have a distributed load of 100 and I need well, what, what this thing is saying that moving from left to right I'm decreasing by 100 so if I was at 0 after 1 foot I'm going to be at 100 in the negative after 2 feet I'm going to be at 2 so and so on so after 4 I'm going to be at negative 400 so it's negative 400 then what happens I'm going to be pushed up by a thousand so I'm gonna go all the way to probably right here which is 600 because I was at negative 400 I was pushed by a thousand that's a negative 600 then between this point and the concentrated load there is there are no loads so I'm gonna move straight like that then I'm gonna be pushed down by a thousand so I was at positive 600 I will be at negative 400 again so it's negative 400 and between here and here there are no loads I'm gonna continue and I'm gonna be pushed 400 again to reach zero so I start with a zero and by the way this is a straight line like that I start with a zero and I end with a zero this is the uh, shear force diagram now let's try to do the moment diagram for the moment diagram what I need uh, the, the points I need the moment at let me just draw this one try to draw it straight so I need the moment here 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 and at the end so what is the value of this moment uh, or the moment at this uh, location the value of the moment right here basically is the area under the shear diagram from the beginning of the beam or from the beginning of the beam yes all the way to the point of interest so it's this va this area right here and this is an area of triangle so it's one half so the area is one half multiplied by 400 multiplied by this distance which is 4 
and that will give me negative 800 because the, we have a negative 400 here so it's a negative 800 okay now what about uh, the sh the moment diagram or the moment value here basically it's the area under the shear diagram from the beginning from right from this point all the way to that point okay I already know the area of this which is negative 800 I need to find the area of this thing or this area it's 600 multiplied by 4 and that's gonna give me positive 2400 okay and if I add the 2400 of this area to the negative 800 I will get 1600 or 1600 so it's somewhere in here 1600 I'm skipping the units for now and the moment at the end should be zero why because I have a roller at this end and if you want to double check if you are at 1600 calculate this area right here this is the uh, the area here is negative 400 multiplied by 4 that's negative 1600 and you add it to the previous areas and the previous areas are all represented in the positive 1600 so negative 1600 plus positive 1600 will give you uh, zero okay I know that for the shear uh, for the moment diagram from this point to that point it's a straight line why because the shear diagram is a horizontal line right here so this one has uh, it's a function of x to the zero and if I integrate this and you can look at the integration technique we've done in a couple of the tutorials if you integrate a function with uh, x to the zero the new function will be x to the power one or basically x and x if you want to plot a function that's to the first degree you will get a straight line so it's gonna look something like this it's a straight line same thing goes right here now the question is about this this segment is it for this segment I have two points like that I know it's not a straight line because this is the the, fu uh, the function here or the shear here is represented by x and if I integrate it's gonna have x squared and x squared can go like this or can go like this it can be concaved up or concave down but how do I check we know a trick before uh, we have positive and decreasing negative and decreasing we have negative and increasing and we have positive and increasing the shear diagram between this point and this point is negative because it's below the x-axis so I'm gonna take out these two options okay is the value of the shear increasing as I go from right to left yes it is increasing it's starting with a zero and going to 400 forget about the negative sign here for now is the shear uh, is the shear value going away from the horizontal line yes if you take the absolute value of the 400 so it's increasing so I'm talking about this part right here so my concavity will look like this line right here so this is the concavity now I know the maximum moments remember the equation I'm trying to do is my over i for sigma and now I know m I need now to do the y and the i okay the centroid let's try to find the centroid of this shape it's very straightforward problem you can do this in an exam very quickly you don't need to do the tables as uh, as we've done it before and this I believe this one is one inch and this one is five inches this one is one inch and this thing I believe it was 
five inches. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna assume my x-axis is here and my y-axis is here and for the centroid it's basically the summation of y bar a over the summation of a. I can divide this cross section into two areas. Okay, and this is the second area. So I can I can basically find the summation of a's. Okay, what about y bar? Y bar is the distance from the local centroid of the divided area to the x-axis. So if I say this is my local centroid and this is my local centroid. If I know this distance that's gonna be y bar 1 and this distance will be y bar 2. They are very easy to find. Let's apply them. I have two areas so I have first one for the y bar 1 which is this one it's 5 plus half so it's 5.5 .5 multiplied by the area the area of this segment right here it's 5 by 1 so it's 5 multiplied by 1 now I'm gonna do the second area so this is basically this is y bar and this is the area the second y bar which is y bar 2 is half of the distance right here which is 2.5 multiplied by this area again it's 5 by 1 and the whole thing is divided by the summation of the areas which is 5 by 1 for the first one plus 5 by 1 for the second area both areas are the same and if I do this I will get 4 inches so if this is my cross section like that very quickly I will have if this is 1 inch and this is 5 inches and this is 5 inches and this is 1 I will have the location right here with this distance is 4 inches and the remaining distance is 2 inches so this is the location of the uh, centroid it's at 4 inches from the bottom okay now comes the tricky part which is the moment of inertia for the moment of inertia let's say we have the shape again and the distances we already know this is one and this is five inches and this is one and now we know the location of the centroid which is two inches and four inches now I need to apply what is known as the parallel axis theorem which says that the total I equals the summation of local I plus the area of the segment multiplied by D squared okay the area of the segment is basically the area of the divided segment so this is a1 and probably this is a2 now the i for a section that's b by h the i equals b h cubed over 12 and that takes care of this and the a the d comes now the d basically is the distance from the local centroid of the segment to the neutral axis so we need to find this distance and 
for the second one it's if this is the local centroid it's this distance so for the summation we will do two uh, segments we can do them in one step so we can say i equals for the first step what is the i of the first step it's the i of the top segment b is 5 so it's 5 multiplied by 1 cubed over 12 plus the area is 5 by 1 and the d is this distance this distance is basically one half less of the two so it's 1.5 squared now we'll do the second i which is the b is 1 the h is 5 so b h cubed over 12 plus let me just erase this and write it over here okay what is the area it's 1 by 5 and what is this distance this distance basically up to here it's 4 okay and up to here it's 2.5 so the remaining to be 4 is 1.5 so it's 1.5 squared and if I do this calculation I will get 33.33 .33 inches to the 4 so now I have all the information needed to find the maximum uh, flexural stress the compression stress and the tensile stress so uh, we have the beam like this and we had a moment right here which is minus 800 we had a moment here which is 1600 these are the two maximas we had the positive and the negative and we had y which is the location and i will i will leave this for now and we had an i of 33.33 .33 inches to the 4 now the equation says that sigma equals m y over i there is no doubt I only have one i for the m I have two moments which one should I use that's one question the other thing is what is the definition of y okay so let's take a look at the beam here this is the first support and this is the this is the second support what I have here at this point the beam is deflected like this and at that point the beam is deflected like this or let me draw it upstairs right up there right here it's concaved like this and here it's like that so if I draw the cross section very quickly like this okay and I will draw it again here to see the other effect and I have a neutral axis g that goes like this okay what happens here that this bending moment the positive bending moment will try to put the top portion in compression and for the negative moment it will put the bottom portion into compression okay now what are the distances I have 2 and 4 and of course with the same thing I will have 2 and 4 my question is if I'm looking for the maximum stress and the moment here at point C for example is putting the top part into compression 
would you use the 2 inches or the 4 inches to find the maximum compression stress again looking at this equation the stress goes up if the moment goes up and if y goes up okay for this part right here for the first part the moment is fixed is 1600 which y should I use to get the maximum okay I would use the 4 that will give me the maximum okay for this one right here if I use the 4 what will I get if I use the 4 I will compress this more okay and let me try to explain it one more time for this one for part one if you use this equation sigma equals m y over i the moment you have right here is negative 800 and i is 33.33 okay the y you have two options you can use the 4 or the 2 but the question is which one of these two will give you a maximum stress of course you would say if I use 4 I would get a maximum stress now my question is if you use the 4 what type of stress you will get in this beam you will get a compressive stress in this area in the 4 segment because you use the 4 in the 4 segment you get compression for the other one again same logic applies sigma equals m y over i the i is 33.33 .33 m is 1600 so what y would you use would you to get the maximum value 2 inches or 4 inches of course you use the 4 but if you use the 4 this length the segment that is covered by this length is it under compression or under tension we've seen before that this part is under compression that so this part is under tension so if you use the 1600 with the 4 you will get tensile stress and if you use the 800 with the 4 you will get compression Okay, I hope I uh, I hope the concept is, c is clear for you guys. So what I need to do say that sigma c or the compression. Of course, it's m y over i. The m is eight hundred, which is uh, multiplied by four. The eight hundred is pound foot so multiply by 4 multiply it to tw uh, into 12 to change the foot into inches the whole thing is divided by 33.33 33, and that will give me 1152 pound per inches square second one is m y over i i will use the 1600 multiply by the 4 and again multiply it by 12 to change the units divide by 33.33 .33 and that will give me 2304 pound 
per inches square. So these are the maximum compressive and tensile flexural stresses. Again, just a reminder, if you have a cross section and you are thinking what distance gives me what kind of uh, stress is this compression or tension first get the moment second decide on what y uh, you will of course you second you have the to find the i then decide of what y would you use let's say you wanted to use this y let's say it's y1 and this is y2 if you decided to use y1 before putting any letter right here below the stress to say it's compression or tension look at the segment if you want to use the Y1 look at the segments that that Y1 represents is this segment under this moment is it under compression or under tension if it's under compression go ahead and put Sigma C if it's under tension go ahead and put Sigma T and that should conclude our tutorial for today thank you